coming intercepted by Gilmore. Goodbye. Gone and Root to his second pick six of the season. It is intercepted. It is picked up by the Bills. The Bills are going to the postseason. Garoppolo Chase throws for the end zone. It is caught by Kendrick Bourne. Gurley a stiff arm at the five. And Gurley tiptoes in for the touchdown. Wentz, he floats it. Touchdown. Who else? Zach Ertz. Throwing the ball to the right and a nifty catch for Winston at the three. And three steps into the end zone for the goal. away from a triple header on Saturday right here on NFL Network. Pro Bowl is revealed. This is Good Morning Football. We're presented by Intuit QuickBooks Live in New York City, December 18th. Kay Adams, Nick Wilson, Peter Schrager, Kyle Brett, we're all here and quite a show. We're all here. Let's get into it, Kay. We all have right. a great show for you. We've got a Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year nominee on the show from the Washington Redskins, Nick Sunberg. Here, here we go. Tell us why it's important to be the cleanest man in the NFL. I'll let you interpret that however you want. Okay. We're going to break it down. I like his clothes? Or? Is it clothes? Is it how he smells? Does he take showers daily? Okay. I try to. It's Wednesday, so you know what that means. Peter's going to break down the coolest plays of the week. What do we call this segment? Cool Plays Bro. Nate, you said you try to shower daily? <laughs> I try. <laughs> cool Plays Bro. Nobody's perfect, Peter. And then we're going to test our focus and endurance with K's The Long Show. That is usually the craziest segment of the entire And it's week. early in the hour. It's in the seven hour, so pay attention. Okay. And we got another huge guest. This guy could be Defensive Rookie of the Year. Nice. From the Jags, seventh overall pick, the other mm. Josh Allen. He'll tell us why he is the most important Josh okay. Allen in the league. He's going to join us in a bit. we got a great show. Was the other Josh Allen, the quarterback, a Pro Bowl snub? We'll be getting into all of that right now and right here on GMFB. Join us for the lead block. The lead block. The lead block. We talked about what's going down on Saturday. Right here on NFL Network, it's the Bills visiting the Patriots, a crucial AFC East battle. So let's start by getting a bit of an injury update to set the table for us on the Patriots quarterback, Tom Brady. And Mike Chiardi is telling us that it's easier said than done. Well, Kay, you know Bill Belichick hates talking about injuries. In fact, you're usually met with a sneer, and they'll direct you to the injury report that will come out later in the day telling you you'll be the first one to get a copy. But when asked a question on Tuesday about the backup quarterbacks getting more work because of Tom Brady's right elbow injury, he did admit there have been times this year where Brady's been limited in practice. He never says that kind of stuff. But it goes to show you that what we saw on Sunday with Brady, as I was trained on him in the pregame, flexing that right elbow out between every throw he made in warm-ups, that this is an issue. And it's been an issue long before it first popped up on the injury report prior to that Dallas Cowboy game in late November. In fact, at least a month longer than that. And Brady has really struggled over the last five games. Hasn't completed more than 55.3% of his passes. That's crazy for Tom Brady. You know he'll show up and play. But you just don't know how effective he's going to be at this point between the elbow and obviously the issues that they've had at wide receiver. Kate. It has not been a usual year for the Patriots offense. More issues than I can ever remember with this Tom Brady-led squad. Tom Brady sounds a little bit different. And like he has a bit, different, a bit of a different approach going into this year. Here's what he said to his guy, Jim Gray, on WEEI. We know our defense is going to play good. So for us to not turn the ball over, we have a almost 95% chance of winning the game. We can't just take a knee three times and then punt. But at the same time, I don't think it is really worth it to be careless with the ball. And I am doing the best I can to try and take care of it. So... Apparently, this is how Brady sees it 15 weeks in. Can the Patriots win with this strategy, Nathan? 100%. I said before that this is the most scrutinized 11-3 team of all times. Listen, the Patriots, they're one of the best at self-correcting. I think we're starting to lose confidence because they started off the season so well. They were averaging like 32 points a game, which was at that point the best in the league. And then the last six games, they're bottom of the league, like mm -hmm. literally 30th in the league offensively. But it's okay if your defense carries you. It's just fine if your defense is better than your offense at certain points in the season. I'll take it back to the Peyton Manning Super Bowl. You guys remember that year? Peyton Manning with the Broncos, his arm is literally falling off the ball and he's skipping balls into the ground. Sure. Brock Osweiler had to come in and spell him that season. They wouldn't have won a Super Bowl without what? 
their defense. Miller, so right. it's okay that the defense is holding them down. I'm still not going to panic until we're sitting here in January mm -hmm. and we show up on the show the next day and somebody just knocked the Patriots. Quickly, mm -hmm. let me ask you this. Why, are, why is it going to be different next time the Patriots face quarterbacks that the defense hasn't held down, like Deshaun Watson, like Lamar Jackson, like Patrick Mahomes? Because, because the defense didn't carry them in those games. Those teams beat New England, even because, in New England. Because they have film to work with, Kay. Mm -hmm. And the advantage is you have a coaching staff that has been in this league a lot longer than the young legs that ran past them in those games. So now you try to make a difficult game plan for a, a young Lamar Jackson or a young Pat Mahomes. And if you can do that, confuse them game by game, quarter by quarter, then you'll have a chance of beating those young guys on your way to Miami. They won a Super Bowl this way last year. They won 13-3 to relying on the defense. Brady didn't have a crazy statistical game. It wasn't all about Brady. It was about Edelman making key seven-yard catches and outs. And then, of course, the defense, Stephon Gilmore making the big pick. But to get to the Super Bowl, they had to put up points against the Chiefs. They had to score 34 points against Chiefs. I don't know, to Kay's point, if this is a strategy to win a Super Bowl one game, but is it a strategy to go the distance here throughout the playoffs? Because you're going to have to score against Andy Reid's offense. You're going to have to score against this Lamar Jackson lightning show. I don't know if you can win 13-10, 16-13, 13-3, and then win a Super Bowl 7-3. Not in 2019, not with these offenses. One game, yes, if you're preparing for two weeks, we can take away your best weapon. This might be enough and sufficient to get a win against Buffalo on Sunday or maybe to get a win in the playoffs. Nate, I don't think you can win this way going the whole gauntlet throughout the AFC. Best defense Belichick's ever had. But I think cart before the horse. They got to take care of Buffalo. And I find that quote by Brady very self-aware, very humbled, mm -hmm. very modest, and very accurate. I think this game against Buffalo is a classic uh, who blinks. Or like as they say, would say in MMA, it's like a, a first blood. Like who makes the first mistake? I know how the Patriots offense versus the Bills defense is going to go. I, I know it. I have no idea how Pat's D versus Bill's O is going to go. I'm really surprised. And when Brady starts saying, just don't mess it up, it reminds me a little bit of early Brady. Like, I feel like he won his first couple Super Bowls being like, just let Willie and Brewski handle this thing, and I know how to maintain the game. I actually think it's very smart because someone of his accomplishments and his ego, frankly, could be like, look, I got it. I'll right. throw four touchdowns whenever the hell I want. He's not. He's like, maybe we should take three knees. And I think it's smart. Because I don't think that they can throw four touchdowns whenever they want. Can you see them putting up 35? They're the, probably no. the one team in the AFC that other, outside of the Bills that I don't think can do that. And I think people look, Shregs, at the Cincinnati g game and they see the final score and they think, well, they blew out Cincinnati. They put up over 30. It was a game was, for most of got, that game. You got a pick six. You had a, had a special teams play. And it was 10-7 in the first quarter. Bengals leading. So it wasn't I like believe they came the out. Patriots can do this with defense. I yeah. think Because I don't think it's a good defense. I think it's an all-time special special defense and there's a huge difference I think it is like that Broncos defense. I still have the taste of what the Ravens did to them on that Sunday night Tough, in yeah. Baltimore and Tough. then I have the taste of what the Texans did and DeAndre Hopkins getting a trip like Chiefs. The, the three good teams right now yeah. that are that are in there that have all beaten them so to your point can they adjust sure but it doesn't say that hey we can beat yeah. them 10 to 7 no those teams scored on that defense call me overly optimistic and, and call me uh, a guy that is just leaning on what happened in years past with the dynasty but I do believe they can put up 25 30 mm. Points. Just because they have a Rolodex of game plans that they can date back almost 20 years. The guys that they're facing can't do that in the mm. playoffs. When Tom Brady goes to the sideline in his third quarter, third down, and they're looking for a play, most teams have a handful of plays. They got an entire playbook yeah. that dates back decades. So I feel like when the time is right, They'll start pulling stuff out their back pocket, and once again, we'll say, whoa, that was a creative game plan. And once again, that coaching staff outcoached their opponents. And they might not need to put up 30. They're just going to have to keep everybody else to under 20, which with this defense, they might be able to do. Either way, it's going to be a game on Saturday. Break out. It Break really in. is. Taking a look at the playoff implications of this one as part of a triple header. It is the middle. It is the meat of the triple header sandwich here. The Patriots sit atop the AFC East in the number two seed in the AFC. Overall, the Bills trail them by just one game. Are the Bills ready for this stage? And let's not pretend, Shriggs, that they haven't been in prime time. They, of course, took down the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. They had prime time, and they had prime time again recently. Think about a small, small-time comedian in his local town, and he's killing it. Then all of a sudden, he gets to call up to the like that first game against the Cowboys was doing it at the Giggles or the lot, the Funny House, the you Chuckle know, Hut. And then you go and do like the Improv, and that's the game last week against the, against the Steelers. Yeah, and now. 
we've got Saturday Night Live. Like, this is it. This is Saturday. Everyone watching primetime. Oh, nice. And nice. the Bills have to be ready for this. And I think it's going to come down to their defensive line, knocking the snot out of that offensive line, that defensive line crushing Brady. If you haven't gotten to know these guys, it is a deep unit, and they come at you from all angles. Jordan Phillips was two sacks last week. Shaq Lawson, Ed Oliver, Jerry Hughes, Trent Murphy. This reminds me of that Giants defensive line that gave Brady sure. fits in that first Super Bowl sure. with O.C. and Tough. Tuck and Strahan and Jay Alford. They were coming. The Bills have what it takes on defense to give this offense fits. This is Saturday Night Live. This is their chance on the marquee, and I think they're going to show up. Well said. I think for the Bills, this is this is prom week. This is everything. This You get dressed up. You get the fancy lip. Limo, and there's a peen down your leg factor that I don't know if this Bills team has it yet. I really mean it. I think that one touchdown from the Bills offense could win this game, and I think one interception could lose it. It's that tight. It's prom week. Big yeah, time. and if this is SNL, the Bills are the musical guests. The Patriots are Eddie Murphy. That's fair. That's won. good. And as soon as they open their mouth, as soon as they make that one play at home, the crowd's going to be enormous. So the Bills are going to have to not only beat the Patriots, they're going to have to beat Fox. The question is, can they? I think they can. I don't know if I'm picking the Bills in this. Maybe I will by the time this game happens on Saturday. But you look at what, the, what do they have to do? Last time they played each other was week four. I was at that game. Brady, 18 of 19, mm-hmm. or 18 of 39, rather, for 150 yards. We had three interceptions, a reckless Josh Allen. He's not playing that way anymore. In fact, over the last nine games, he has 19 touchdowns, just two interceptions. Also, Devin Singletary didn't play the first time that they met. Now, he's Killing it on the through the air on the ground, doing everything they need, letting it be a more balanced attack. The mistakes that Josh Allen was making in Week Four, he's not going to make even on the road in Foxborough. It's okay, they're going to win. I think they might. I think it'll be really close. I think they might. Too. Yeah, I think. <laughs> you think they'll be really close, or you just might. laid out the whole case? I, I almost Split might kind of sort of Schragery say that sure. they've got a good chance. Eddie Murphy, One could argue. Really it's the good game in, of the week for me. Eddie Murphy, really good and really famous in uh, yesteryear. Uh-huh. Lizzo, the musical act, uh-huh. really hot right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. First joke's gonna bring the house down. You know, Schrager's, <laughs> on, Schrager's on the sideline for this one uh, in Foxborough, welcoming the Bills to town. Before that, though, 1 p.m. Eastern, we're shooting Kyle out of a cannon. That's right. That's right. Right. By me, I mean me. Big match. Hi, matey. Into a vat of rum. It's a Saturday triple header only on NFL Network. Of course, the Texans at Bucks, 1 p.m. And the night game, Rams at Niners, 8:15 p.m. Eastern. You will hear the vocal stylings. And the masterful pun game of one Nate Burleson in the booth for that first game. We'll dig into it in a bit. But these Saturday games couldn't be.